Why would it take Robin Hood half a day to fetch a pail of water? What did tea, pudding and Robin Hood have in common? Why was New Year's Eve 1998 such a massive night for Robin Hood? And who is the tallest Little John? <gasps> Intriguing! about Robin Hood. We'll be giving you our favourite facts that we found out uh, this week about Robin Hood. And at the end of the episode, a winner will be crowned. Will that winner be Nathan Kenny? Will it be Jennifer Jewell? Will it be Thomas Adams? Or will it be myself, Samuel Bain and Heatley Smith? We shall find out very, very soon. It's been a big week, you guys. It turns out I know so little about Robin Hood. Something I thought I knew lots of. I grew up watching the, the 1973 Disney Robin Hood. Turns out he's not a fox. Hmm. You know why he was a fox in the Robin Hood Disney film? Hmm. They were working on a story about Reynard the Fox and went, this is not appropriate for children. Yeah. And, went, and then they were like, let's do Robin Hood. And then the animator hmm. was like, I've got all these fox images <laughs> that I want to use. Can we make it so that the last five <laughs> years of my life haven't been an absolute waste of time? Yeah, thanks very much. Let's make it animals. <laughs> in fairness, they but, already had Richard the Lion Heart. They just made him the lion everything else as well. And then it would be yeah. weird if it was just a fox, a lion, and a bunch of people. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but have you guys seen the overlays from um, the Jungle Book? And <gasps> yeah. The, yes. uh, so when, the, when Balu is dancing, they reused the whole kitten caboodle for robin hood or maybe it was the other way around jungle book was before robin hood so robin hood reused it there's also an animation from snow white and the seven Mm. dwarves of when snow white is dancing with um the dwarves and maid marian is dancing with um the little kits yes that's right yeah yeah they just did it all the time because animation is quite tricky so they thought oh rather than just redrawing everything we'll just use the basis of this it was quite a common and thing there, in animation there was no internet to call them out on their lies so exactly right. got away with it for years <laughs> for years have you years. seen the comparisons of the lion king and the i can't remember what it's called the japanese oh, um, yeah. manga of the white lion those are quite copyright yeah. infringement rather yeah. than yeah. Like, oh look they just used <laughs> yeah. a cool overlay thing no it's like this is hmm i did find out that the jungle book was the first film that disney made without walt disney Kind of love the way that it sounds a bit like, you know, he died and they were like, oh, that's really sad. Now we can finally make the Jungle Book. (laughs) Oh, did I say the Jungle Book? I meant to say Robin Hood. Did you guys know that um, (laughs) Baloo from the Jungle Book and Little John were voiced by the same actor? And he also did the voice of Thomas O'Malley in Aristocats. Now that you say that, that makes perfect sense. Is he John Goodman's dad? He's John Goodman's dad. Yep, that's right. (laughs) No, so did they just John reuse Goodman. any of his dialogue from the Jungle Book? It's a weird <laughs> bit where little John calls Robin Hood Mowgli. I didn't think that was strange. Mm. <laughs> but Robin Hood was, um, the, the, the Disney was actually the highest grossing film of all time uh, when it came out. Um, Amazing. Which is also great because Ironic. my original fact was, who is the sexiest Robin Hood? Yeah. This one. It turns yes. out the fox. <laughs> Foxy Robin Hood. The fox mm. is the sexiest Robin Hood. There are so many articles. Cosmo says... This is the sexiest Robin Hood. Yeah. Uh, I love that you're citing as the authority, Cosmo. Cosmo. BuzzFeed. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Sam oh, Smith okay. says I, it. I, I detract, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of um, uh, using sort of characters again, um, the fox in Zootopia is basically the same as Robin Hood from Robin Hood as well. Yeah, he was literally inspired by the yeah. fox from Robin Hood. But quite ironic that uh, Robin Hood, the film, took money from lots of kids and gave it to the Disney Corporation, who are <laughs> quite well off. Yeah. Well, yeah. you say that, Kenny, but in the original Robin Hood, Robin Hood's been around, the, the, you know, there's been kind of early sightings of him in the 1300s. Yeah, um, it was 13, I first, looked up, it was 1377 was the first mention of Robin Hood. Trans, you know, first book that actually, or well, first text that actually contains him is like in the 1500s. But at the point, there's actually no, there's nothing in there that says, I give, I take from the rich and give to the poor. I'd say he probably took from the rich just because the poor famously don't have much money. <laughs> so if he's, if he's stealing from anyone, like, ah, it's going to be more efficient to take yeah. from the rich. He could have taken a higher proportion of the poor people's money. Yep. Well, there are some versions of the Robin Hood story where he's a yeoman in the king's court and he just gets bored of being at court. So he just goes to live in the woods. He's not an outlaw. He's just like, yeah. I like trees. 
Yeah. I thought Robin Hood was presumably a person from history, but it turns out, no. Robin Hood basically is a translation of robber in the woods, and woods then became hood, and then hood then became other things. He was known as Robin Had, Robin Hod, Robbie Hod, Robbie Hodger. I made that one up, but it sounds right. There's also a theory that Robin Hood is from robe and hood, i.e. Yeah. he was like hooded and robe and cowled, so you couldn't see who he was, so it was just... Yeah. He was just this shadowy, lurky, bandity figure. Yeah. So he's like a collection of a lot of people all brought together to be one sort of guy. There is a Robin Hood who was an outlaw who was recorded in court records in 1226. And he was in the court records because his property was being seized by the state because he was a fugitive. Amazing. But did you see where he was from, Jen? Is um, that the one from Berkshire? There's one from Yorkshire. Yorkshire tea, Yorkshire pudding. Ah. And Robin Hood himself in the earliest poems. So he's referred to as a Yorkshireman. So he would have been going around saying tin, tin, tin and lick (laughs) for a clean of tongue. And (laughs) And hoity-toity-toity. Yes, that um, famous Irish Yorkshireman. (laughs) But if you ask young kids nowadays, they won't believe you. (laughs) (laughs) There were 26 of us living at Middlet Road and then Robin Hood (laughs) come through and steal all our flooring. (laughs) He'd kill us every morning, dance on our graves. Sing it, hallelujah. <laughs> Shot an hour right through us, he did. Yeah. There's a myth, that, um, or a legend that when Robin Hood died, the Robin Hood, he was dying and he decided, oh, I'm dying. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, he fired an arrow out, it went flying into the woods, and he said, okay, bury me where that la- arrow landed. And I presume the person with him went, what? Why the hell? Did- I'm not going to find an arrow in the forest. <laughs> This ground here is quite soft. I'll just drop this arrow here. Oh, you're <laughs> dead. How did that oh, look, not? Robin, it landed right here. How convenient for us. Yeah. Another thing I found out is that um, the Sheriff of Nottingham is obviously a big part of the Robin Hood story. He's sort of the main bad guy. But the first Sheriff of Nottingham didn't exist until 70 years after the first iteration of Robin Hood came around. So, like, that story is just all mashed up with the King Richard and King John kind of story. And before uh, the Sheriff Nottingham was around, he, he had a different title, which was the High Sheriff of Nottinghamshire and Devonshire. I googled, uh, yeah, what was the Sheriff of Nottingham called before he was called that? And it just came up and said, Keith. Because I think the I think the current Sheriff of Nottingham <laughs> used to be called Keith before it, which is great. Do we all know who the best Sheriff of Nottingham is? Is it Richard Lewis? Friend of the po- Rickman. It's Alan yep. Rickman. <laughs> Friend of the podcast, Alan Friend Rickman. Because he's in Prince of Thieves, which is famously a blockbuster, but also widely mocked. Yeah. And um, It's a the candy scene, delight. Well, the scene where he's like, I'll cut out your heart with a spoon is improvised. <laughs> really? Please yep. tell me he picked up the wrong implement. He was supposed to pick up a wicked, vicious looking knife and instead he picked up a spoon and was like, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I've got another regret effect about, um, which, which blew my mind. So Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, mocked later on in the movie, the classic Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Tights. Um, guess who was originally approached to be Robin Hood in Prince of Thieves before Kevin Costner? Are we going to get Alan Rickman to be? <laughs> no. Friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast, Carry Aways. Wow. Oh. But he, he was approached to be, and he said no. Because, I mean, obviously he was great. He'd already kind of, he was in Princess Bride. He already had a, um, you know, a, a pretty amazing following. Um, he said no, because he didn't want to be typecast as a swashbuckler. Amazing. Mm-hmm. That's gone real well for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant who was originally going to play Robin Hood in Men in Tights. No. And when you said it... Carrie always, I was like, that's not a twist, because he no. did play Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Very no, confused. Kevin Costner. Actually, Kevin Costner was originally uh, approached to be He's in Men in Tights. He's going to parody himself. The guy who played like the 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 larger football player in not another teen movie, he is parodying the role he played in I think it's Varsity Blues, which is pretty funny. Gary always is, is a is a national treasure. Um he he keeps saying that if they ever try and recreate the Princess Bride movie, he will burn it all to the ground. <laughs> uh, which I think is fair. He's also been quite vocal about wanting to do a sequel. I think it's just he he just loves that film and he loves everything about having been in it. They did a sequel, didn't they? Yeah. The Princess Diaries 2? That's the sequel to yeah. that, right? Yeah. Mm. There is actually a sequel. It's I think it's called Buttercup's Baby. Oh. It's called The Princess Divorce. <laughs> did you guys know that Maid Marian was black? Mm. 
Yeah, oh. this is a this is a bit of an interesting theory. Um, the ter- the name Marion it originally meant black. It was associated with um, African American people, or or I think the color black even, and has been whitewashed throughout history. And they almost mm-hmm. cast um, a black actress in like the most recent the Taron Egerton Robin Hood, but um, didn't at the last minute for some reason. But that might happen in the future, and it will be more historically accurate if they do. From what I've read, I kind of assumed that she was a like romantic outgrowth of original ballads, which associated Robin quite strongly with the worship of the Virgin Mary. Originally, so yeah, it was, it was that, almost like and- he went from being a Marian to wanting to be with Marian. Oh, that's mm. Marian is a term for people who worship the Virgin Mary. That's nice. When you look at depictions of her, she's often depicted wearing blue and white, which is the traditional colours of the Virgin Mary. And in the oh. Robin Hood um, Disney film, she's wearing that kind of classic wimple thing, which is yeah. how the Virgin Mary is often depicted in Catholic iconography. Oh. Hmm. She's also a vixen, which isn't really what you get associated. Yeah, possibly more <laughs> of a Magdalene than a Marian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys know that in 1998, in, on New Year's Eve, something big happened for Robin Hood? You may remember a little song called The Hamster Dance. So The Hamster Dance song was on a GeoCities website back in the day in 1998. And it was a competition between this lady called Deirdre Lacart and her friend to see who could like attract the most, um, the most traffic to their website. Um, and so this lady put up this animated gif of a hamster dancing and put this little song next to it. That song was a little segment of a song called Whistle Stop by Roger Miller. And that song is the opening song in the 1973 Robin Hood. So that song was then taken, sampled, made into this bigger song called the Hamster Dance Song. That website blew up. Someone posted it online while they were sitting at home on New Year's Eve. It blew up online. They got 30,000 hits over, overnight, which is back in 1998 is quite a big deal. That was the whole internet. That was the whole internet. That's right. And so from then, someone got that, got the song. Um, they, they mixed it into the dance version of it, was released into the charts. It was in contention to be the Christmas number one in the UK. Um, it, it was up against Cliff Richard, Westlife, and um, someone else. And and Westlife won, but Hamster Dance was almost the Christmas number one almost a year later. And it was all because of this uh, this song that someone basically stole from the Disney Robin Hood. Interesting. That's so cool. Oh. And the only song more annoying than that is Everything I Do, I Do It For You, which was <laughs> also in Robin Hood and also goes on forever, just like the bloody hamster dance thing. I've got that burned into my brain. It's taking yeah. all my work out. Not to, not to sing it right now. Like Everything to... I do. No, the hamster dance. <laughs> oh. Wasn't it? Was it, is it that song that was voted the best song of the 1990s and the, the worst and song? The worst song of the yes. 1990s. <laughs> um, that's everything I do, I do it for you, not the Hamster Dance song, which is clearly the best yeah. song of the 1990s. Yeah. Truly, truly a Marmite song, then. So, you guys want to know how I said that, you know, The Muppets were probably one of my comedy foundations and uh, Steve Owen, one of my animal foundations. Yeah. I'm going to have to add Men in Tights into the mix yeah. there as well. I'm um, with you as I've well. I've watched that so many times. Yeah. Uh, it's I, th- so I think it was good. the first comedy movie that I was like, oh my God, this comedy exists in like a long form as well. It opened my eyes to Mel Brooks. You mean and... I can make movies about other movies and take make fun of them? Yeah. People yeah. pay me to do that? I'd just like to point out that Men in Tights caused an awakening in Tom. So <laughs> I'll talk that. Wasn't your mole on the other side? I have I a have mole. mole. I am incapable of folding my tights without singing to myself. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, the fact that we had on the podcast uh, the other week that Blinken um, is in Arrested Development as Dr. Miller, which is quite funny. Oh, and George Miller's the name, the surname of the singer who sang Whistle Stop. It all comes together. (laughs) Sam, have you ever used the phrase, I can see? Then I run into a tree. um, (laughs) I'm guessing. I'm... (laughs) Guessing <laughs> no one's coming. <laughs> Master Robin, you've lost your arms in battle, but you grew a nice but set game. of boobs. Um, but your comments, Sam, about Maid Marian being black made me think there's apparently, since the 1980s, there's been this weird convention that one of the Merry Men is Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to have just popped up in 1984, and then everyone afterwards was like, yeah, there were definitely Moors, Saracens, Muslims in England yeah. at that time. 
but it led me to discover the best thing I've ever heard. I don't know how I've never heard of this series, but I need to track it down and watch all of it. It was a 1990s BBC sitcom called Maid Marian and Her Merry Men. It's my favourite kids show. It sounds amazing. The fact that there's a character called Barrington, who was a Rastafarian rapper played Uh, by Danny John Jules. John Jules. So his... (laughs) His, he has one of my favorite songs of all time, which is the Pancake Day song. Hey, it's Pancake Day. Yes, it's Pancake Day. Yeah, it's pop, 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 Pancake Day. I sing it every <laughs> Pancake Day. It's amazing. Um, Tony Robinson was in it. Uh, he was the sheriff oh, of Nottingham wow. who played Baldrick. Um, Wait, yeah, I was going to say, how did Tony Robinson play a baddie? He's so kind of sweet uh, looking. I, I used to be on in the afternoon um, when we came home from, from school. And, oh, man, it's so good. Here's a question. How many of the Merry Men can you name? Okay. Little John. Will Scarlet. Alan Adale. Will Scarlet. Um, who's much the, it's the like Miller's much son. the Miller's son? Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck, yep. Which uh, is a great spoonerism. Um, Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's Robin Hood and the Merry yeah. Men. Oh, yeah, true. Like you don't have Aretha Franklin as one of the super. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, Tom Betty was never one of the heartbreakers. Yeah. Mm. Oh, actually, there's Will Scarlet. Will... Scatlock and Will Scutley. And Will Scatfetish. That's funny. Yeah, Will Scatfetish. <laughs> yeah. And, and Little John, Little John, I think, being probably one of the more famous, probably the most famous of mm. the Merry Men. Um, I wanted to find out for my effect um, who is the tallest Little John? Yeah. Because um, it it's bear? a funny joke. He's always big. No, it's not the bear. The bear, because um, you see how tall a bear is compared to a fox. It's not that tall. It's quite a short, it's a short bear. bear. Hey. A short bear. So. Uh, there have been a number of little Johns. Uh, David Morrissey was one meter and 88 centimeters. Nick mm-hmm. Brimble in uh, Prince of Thieves, one meter 93. Eric Ellen Kramer of our favorite movie, Men in Tights, 1.19 uh, meters. Jamie Foxx. 1.19, he's a very small person. <laughs> yes, <laughs> 1.91. Uh, Jamie Foxx, shortest I've found so far. He was only a meter 75. Oh. But the tallest of all the little Johns is an unknown little John, but is also the tallest man in Britain. Neil Fingleton is 2.34 metres tall and will be playing or played little John in a pantomime in Alhambra. Oh my gosh. That's massive. What's that in feet and inches? Uh, Seven foot, seven foot. Sheepers, creatures. Yeah. I was in a play once and I played Robin Hood and the guy playing little John was like six foot three. And I thought, whoa. That guy's a giant. Now, oh, that's a incredible. Half. That's, that's so, so cool. cool. <laughs> I hope he's a good actor. How bad would that be for the tallest guy in the Britain? I but you feel like act. if they could write that part, so all he has to do is kind of walk on stage, and everyone will be like, "Wow!" You only and see that part though, of him so. anyway. The, his his head will get whole hide behind the proscenium arch. <laughs> there was also a cockerel uh, who uh, went for the Guinness Book of Records, who was also called Little John. Uh, and yeah, was the tallest tallest Amazing. rooster. I love that you said that Jamie Foxx was Little John because there's a he fox who was Robin fox. Hood as well. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Did you guys know that in Sherwood Forest you can actually go and there's a there's a big massive tree that apparently where all the merry men used to hang out. Have you been there, Kenny? I've been there. Oh, it's incredible! Quite nice. That's so cool. But, um, it's not very wild though. The paths are like four miles wide and paved, and <laughs> it's um. It's got a visitor center and you can buy a coffee and have an ice cream. Is it, it's just like the nice. merry men would do. <laughs> Weirdly enough, no um, donations box. <laughs> but um, it's not actually near Nottingham. It's freaking ages away. It, I think it might actually be in Yorkshire. It's like an hour and a half north of Nottingham. So Amazing. Yeah, all- and the other thing is, uh, is that where the, there's like a, the grave of Robin Hood as well? I, they found the error. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, apparently this is the thing. They There's a grave or like the remnants of something that people will say is the grave of Robin Hood, which is like, it kind of looks like an old gate maybe or an old fence, um, and sort of an old wee plot. And then someone's put a stone inside that, which they say is the actual um, thing that they used to mark the gravesite of the actual Robin Hood. They moved it and put it there. But then someone did some excavating and found that there was nothing there at all. Nothing was buried underneath the ground and and said the stone came from somewhere else as well. I was looking into all of the places around the UK that are called 
Robin Hood's X, Y, Z. I didn't go for Robin Hood's bay because that felt like cheating. But so my fact was, why would it take Robin Hood half a day to fetch a pail of water? And it's because I tracked the distance from Robin Hood's cave to Robin Hood's well, and it would take you 11 hours to walk. <laughs> so it feels like it's not a very convenient well. But what I found great was that these places, because this is the internet and the internet is terrible and wonderful and equal measures, these places have Google reviews. So if you go from Robin Hood's Cave, which is just outside Ollerton in Newark near Sherwood, it's got 4.4 stars on Google reviews, um, but people complain. It's not a cave. It's a limestone, sorry, a sandstone outcrop. (laughs) So be be warned. Um, And then Robin Hood's Well is just outside Skelbrook in Doncaster. Uh, And someone said they wrote their review with lots of commas. So it sounds like they're really out of breath. So I would like to read it for you in that, in that way, if that's okay. After having cycled the worst part of at least 30 miles, I have to say, I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in my life. Well and truly, this depressing collection of stones situated hard by a thundering double carriageway hardly deserves so illustrious an appellation. Robin Hood, the Prince of Thieves, indeed, has been robbed. For this is no place worth visiting. What with all the disturbance of 24-hour traffic, unless you are some sort of truck driving enthusiast. <laughs> and someone else just, just commented, may I suggest you don't bother to visit, get a life and visit somewhere else. I like that they were complaining about the fact that the spot was next to a motorway, as though yeah. Robin Hood had built his well next yeah. to a motorway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you guys are so surprised. Isn't he a highwayman? Oh, that's, hey. so bad. that's really good. Oh. Well, and then he wasn't because he lived in a forest. He lived off the highway. <laughs> Um, Mm -hmm. So we were talking about how it took Robin Hood like a hundred years from the first extant manuscript to the first one where he talks about robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. And yet in 1953 in Indiana, um, a Republican tried to get him banned from the shelves because he was a communist. (laughs) I like to think of him as a perpetual motion machine because he robs from the rich, gives to the poor. That person's now rich, so he takes it back from there. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Did you guys know if you IMDb just the term Robin Hood, there are 200 t- title matches for the term Robin Hood. And that's, that's movies and TV shows and, and starting to have podcast episodes in there as well. But that's quite a lot for, for one thing. There, there are over 60 of them are feature films. And well, hey, on that cheery note, um, we've probably got to remind everyone of our facts and then vote on our favorite one. I'll go first. The Hamster Dance song, is originally from the 1973 Robin Hood made by disney that's going to be in my head forever <laughs> um uh tin 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 um robin hood was probably a yorkshireman originally the tallest man to ever play little john was seven foot seven or 2.34 meters tall it would have taken robin hood 11 hours to walk from his cave to his well <laughs> all right everyone we are going to vote for our favorite fact um this is really hard because i really like all of them um okay and a one and a two and a three I think that's two votes for Sam. There's two possibly votes for also me two, and votes, two for votes for Jen as well. It is a draw, <laughs> Sam and Jen. Well, thank you all for listening as well. I hope that we have robbed from the richness of our knowledge and given to the paucity of your timeness that didn't work. Ignore it. Move on. If you have facts or information about the beautiful, wonderful Carrie Elways or the sexy fox from the 1973 Disney film, please drop them below. Tell us about your sexual Robin Hood awake thing. Um, let us know topics you'd like us to cover and like and subscribe to the podcast. And we will see you all next week. Goodbye. Peace out, boys.